Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining in. This is Laura with Quilted Chicken, and we are working on our motor block heads for Quilt Along. Uh, we're going to do the flying, oh, it's not flying geese, it's wild geese. They're a little bit bigger than flying geese. We're going to do that block today. This is block eight. It's by Kate Spain. Go ahead and let you see the uh, instructions here. We're going to do the nine inch block today. Now in the comments you can find the link to the block. I, I don't remember if she's got a blog post or anything about this, but uh, if I find that information, we'll stick that in the comments too. So, oh, thank you to everyone who has posted and commented that they enjoy the process of watching the block get put together. I always like to find one print that kind of really jumps out at me. Some some cases it's two prints. You'll ha you'll have one that really looks nice with the other print, and then just lay them down like they look on the block. Just uh, lay them out. So you'll, you've probably seen me sometimes. I'll fold them to look like a triangle, or stick it skinny up next to another one on the other side. Um, you could even cut uh, cut it out in the shape of whatever the block is going to look like and literally lay it down there um, just as a visual, just so that you can see the colors go together. If you have glasses or if you are at that age where you need readers, you can also um, take those glasses off or put them on in the case where you need to, so that your vision is a little bit blurred. Um, it helps then for, it's kind of the same trick of use a black and white photo, use your phone to take a picture. It sort of blurs all those items together and you can see as a whole kind of what they look like and if something jumps out in a spot where it's not supposed to jump out um, it really helps to sort of see it overall um, as a as a whole before you put it together because once you put it together uh, if you don't like it you're just kind of like well I could either do another one and spend another hour or I could just leave it like this so it's nice I like taking that 15 minutes at the beginning of the process to figure out what you, where you want it to be at the end of the process. So I hope that that helps. Um, I hope that you um, get some other tips and tricks while we're going through the block. So like I said, it's uh, Wild Geese by Kate Spain. So let's get, let's, let's take a look guys. So these are probably some of the simplest cutting instructions ever, ever. Well, so far in our quilt along. All of our blocks are cut at three and an eighth, and we use a scant quarter inch seam. If you're not comfortable getting exact a three, exactly a three and an eighth block cut square, you could uh, go ahead and cut it at three and a quarter, uh, and then once it gets pressed, uh, we could square it down. So this, it, the literally all of this cutting out, uh, this entire block is just half square triangles. So if that's your jam, this is the block for you. Um, like I said, we're going to take eight squares that are the background blocks, and then we're going to need uh, four squares of two different colors. I will probably go ahead and do four colors, even before we look at our fabrics. I'm sure that I'll find four fabrics that I want to do here. So then we would only need two squares of four different colors. So this is it. I I went to thinking and I don't know that I've done a ton of blocks that were mostly brown. So for for our 
for our wild geese here. We're gonna have four different uh, browns. Um, I, I also have always gone with, I think almost like kind of a light-ish background and I have not used um, either of these two prints yet. Um, I do like, the, uh, we're gonna use this for our center here. Um, and then I kind of like this to go around um, on the outsides. They are kind of the same tone. This has got a little, this is, this is a tiny bit brighter, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to really center uh, the middle of this block, and then it just kind of fades off into this. You might have seen, I had, this was also one of my browns, but when you lay this down, you don't even have to try to squint or anything to see that this is definitely a, a much uh, more rich color. Um, it's not, um, it's not as dark as these here. It's got a little bit, uh, I don't know if it's a yellow in it, but it's, um, it's, this one does not fit. And if we were doing two and two, um, it might work, uh, but I wanted to get four different blocks, so. Because we are changing the pattern, we are going to need two squares for the center, and then we'll need six squares for the outside. So instead of the eight, instead of eight squares, cut all the, all the same fabric. Because they're half squares, we've got four here, so we're just going to need two squares for the center, and then six for the outside. Okay, so we have our eight squares for the background. We have two of what's gonna be our center and four for the outground. Out, out I just made it, that's not a word, guys. And then for each of our blocks, we have two squares. So because um, our center is gonna be the same and we're gonna have four, we're gonna have four different pieces on each side, I am gonna go ahead and cut all of our squares on the diagonal instead of drawing a line um, simply because it'll be easier for me to lay it out. Um, so since we are cutting them and we'll have we'll have we'll have that bias on each side, we're gonna go ahead and just starch these a little bit before we cut them so that it'll be easier. We won't have that stretch when we put them together. All right, so we've got all of our squares starched.
there we have it. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So um, if you noticed, uh, two of our fabrics are stripes. And so when I cut them on the diagonal, I did flip them. Um, so in order to get our to get our um, to get our stripes to run all the same direction, you notice here they're both cut on the same diagonal, but the directions are switched. If we had not switched them, then our stripes would be running opposite directions. Well, here it is. That was not too bad. I think we did try to take a simple block and make it a little bit more difficult by cutting our uh, half square triangles apart, but it really helped to, it really helped me to see how it was gonna lay out. And it also gave me a chance to take a look at and make sure that my stripes that we did talk about um, rotating the triangle or the rotating that square before we cut it to make to make those stripes at least all run the same direction so that was fun that was block eight wild geese by kate spain uh and like i said i'll have a if you're not a part of the facebook group you can join the facebook group on facebook uh, Kate Spain. I'll also put all of her information down in the sh in the notes so that you can take a look and see that and follow her. So next time we'll have the tiny block, guys. I've kind of been a uh, uh, lax about getting on and looking at everything on the Facebook group. We've had a lot of stuff coming in the shop. We've got a lot of fabric and a lot of patterns and a lot of things to cut and do. So I'm glad that I got to take a break this morning and get this block finished. So join in next time and let me know if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see with us. So thanks for joining. Have a good one.